converting decimals into fractions. If you have a terminating decimal, to convert that, you just write the decimal as a fraction and then simplify. For example, we have 0 0.655, or as we would say this with words, 655 thousandths. So we just write 655 thousandths, and then we reduce it as far as it'll go. We, uh, we can see that a 5 will go into both of these, giving us 131 over 200, and that's simplified as far as it'll go. To convert a repeating decimal into a fraction takes a little bit of trick uh, using algebra. What we'll do is start by assigning a variable to the decimal number. For example, x equals uh, 1010101010. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. This is assuming our repeating decimal is 10, 10, 10, 10, and so on. Right. Then we're going to multiply the variable by a multiple of 10 in order to get one full repeat on the left side of the decimal. So since I've got two digits repeating, I'm going to be multiplying this by 100. In other words, to move the decimal over two places. So that gives us 100x equals 10.10101010. Now if we take these two equations, 100x equals 10.1010 dot dot dot, and x equals 0 .1010 dot dot dot. When we subtract them, we notice that, oops, we notice that all of these decimal values go away. All we're left with, all the digits to the right of the decimal, we're just left with the 10. Now we have a nice simple equation that we can solve. 99x equals 10. Divide both sides by 99 and we get x equals 10 over 99. Let's try that again with another one. Let's rewrite 6 tenths repeating with, uh, in, as a fraction. So I'll start off with x equals point six 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 dot dot dot. Okay, if I get one full repetition, the six is what's repeating, in order to get one full repetition on the other side, I'm going to multiply both sides of this by ten, and that gives me ten x equals six point a bunch of sixes. Now I'll subtract the original equation from my new equation. And when I do that subtraction, I end up with 9x equals 6. It's a simple matter of dividing both sides by 9. And we get x equals 6 ninths which reduces to two-thirds. All right. Oops, I drew over my instructions. Multiplication of rational numbers. Rational numbers are uh, a little odd in one respect in that multiplication is actually easier than addition and subtraction with, with uh, fractions. To multiply two rational numbers, the new numerator is going to be the product of the two numerators, and the new denominator is going to be the product of the two denominators. In other words, multiply straight across. 
sometimes it can be helpful to reduce before multiplying. Um, I'll go ahead and take the 6 times 2. This is new numerator is going to be the product of the two numerators. The new denominator is going to be the product of the two denominators. And that's going to give me 12 over 77. Now this step right here, you'll, you should be able to skip that if you want to. I'm just uh, emphasizing where the numbers are coming from. 3 sixteenths times 4 fifths. Again, that's going to be 3 times 4 over 16 times 5. Now at this point I notice I have a 4 that's a factor in the numerator and there's a 4 that's a factor of the 16 in the denominator. So I can divide the top by 4, leaving a 1. Divide this 16 in the denominator by 4, leaving a 4. Now when I multiply across, I get 3 times 1 is 3. 4 times 5 is 20. Now you'll actually see me do this factoring out here sometimes. That reducing, um, that's okay as well. Division of rational numbers. Uh, division is basically the same as uh, multiplication upside down. So what we're going to do is flip the divisor, which will either be the second fraction or you'll see in a minute a, a complex one where the divisor is the bottom fraction. We're going to flip that, invert that, and turn it into a multiplication problem. So this becomes 4 ninths times 3 halves. At this point I'm going to do some simplification. I've got a 3 in the top, which I can divide out, leaving a 1 in the top right and leaving a 3 in the bottom left. I've got a 2 inside this 4 that I can divide out, and a 2 in this 2. And when I multiply across, 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times 1 is 3. So 4 ninths divided by 2 thirds is 2 thirds. In our next example we have 5 sixths. As I said we're going to invert the divisor so the 9 tenths is going to become a 10 ninths and I'm going to multiply. Uh, this 5 doesn't have any common factors in the denominator. There is a 2 in this 10, so I can divide the 10 by 2, divide the 6 by 2. Now I have 5 times 5 is 25. 3 times 9 is 27. And that is division of rational numbers. Adding and subtracting is a little more complicated because we need to have a common denominator. The least common denominator, which is the same as the least common multiple of the two denominators, um, is the number we're going to want to put our fractions into. So for example, 7 eighths and 1 sixth. Our denominators, 8 and 6, have a least common multiple of 24. 24 is the smallest number that 8 will go into and that 6 will go into. First I need to convert these two into something over 24 and something over 24. To change 7 eighths into a 24 something over 24, I need to multiply the top and bottom by some number. The number I would multiply 8 by to get a 24 is a 3. And I'm allowed to multiply the dot bottom of this rational number by 3 as long as I also multiply the top by 3. Looking at the 1 sixth, I don't need to multiply these by a 3 over 3, I need to multiply it by a 4 over 4. And now 
when I multiply these I will have 8 times 3 is 24 giving me 21 over 24 minus and when I multiply the 1 sixth times 4 over 4 I get 1 times 4 is 4 6 times 4 is 24 finally I can subtract the numerators 21 minus 4 is 17 and the denominator stays the same. So 7 eighths minus 1 sixth is 17 over 24. Let's try it again with 4 minus 15 sixteenths. As we recall earlier from our integers and the beginning of the rational numbers, 4 is the same as 4 over 1. If I need to subtract 15 sixteenths, I'm going to need a common denominator. And the least common multiple of 1 and 16 is 16. So I need to multiply my first term by 16 over 16. The second term's already got the, co the uh, common denominator, so I don't need to do anything to that. 4 times 16 gives me 64. So we have 64 sixteenths minus 15 sixteenths. That gives us 49 sixteenths. At this point, I implore you to look at the instructions to see whether you're asked for a mixed number or a uh, improper fraction. This answer is correct as an improper fraction. If we were asked for a mixed number, we would need to do the division, and we would see that this is also 3 and 1 16ths.